Hello everyone, welcome back to this week's Wolf College of Coffee vlog. Uh, this week we're doing what we said we would, we promised you this video, so here we are dialing in to taste. So if you haven't already, go back and watch our dialing in recipe tool where we dial into a recipe of 20 grams in, 40 grams out in 27 to 30 seconds. Uh, go watch that now, get dialed in. I'm gonna dial in here and then we'll talk about taste. Bingo. All right, welcome back. Hope you're all dialed in. So as we said, by now you should be dialed into a recipe and that is given to you by your roaster. For us, it's 20 grams in, 40 grams out in 27 to 30 seconds. Now we've dialed into that. So what does it mean to dial in to taste? Well, for us, dialing into taste is about chasing flavors. It's about improving the flavor of the coffee that you're working with. Now, for some people, it might be chasing after the flavor that's written on the bag that they're trying to find because, you know, the bag says that it's meant to be fruity and floral, but they're not quite getting a really fruity or really floral flavor. Now, when you use a recipe, it's a good standard. It gives you good flavor, but it could potentially be better. So there's a few things that we talk about when we say dialing into taste. One of them is over and under extraction, and another is how those things then affect that flavor and what we can do as baristas to make changes. Now, the first thing you need to know is what your machine's capabilities are. Some machines are fairly set standard in the way that they brew coffee. Now, you might have a machine that will only brew coffee at the boiler temperature for the coffee boiler, which may be 94 degrees, whether you want it to be or not. The key is, if you have a machine that you can make these changes to, then the world is your oyster and you can make a lot of changes to your coffee. So, we are fully dialed in now, 27 to 30 seconds. We've got our 20 grams in on our grinder. We've got our yield of 40 grams out. We're ready to go. Now, the coffee we're using to dial in for this is our new Guadalupe Zahu by Teddy. Uh, so, Teddy Esteve is our Mexican farmer and what he's done is a bourbon barrel aged coffee. Now for us, that means that it is quite a dark and, and heavy flavored coffee. It tastes like bourbon. It's got some really beautiful caramels and sugars to it. So for this, what we want is a coffee that isn't necessarily bright or fruity or, or sour and acidic. We want the polar opposite of that. So how do we achieve that in terms of using our coffee machine and the other options on it to get the best possible flavor out of it? Let's take a look. So right now, our coffee is operating at 94.6 degrees. That is where the standard is for this machine right now. Now, as we operate coffee and we knock out shots, what we talk about is extraction. If we have over extracted coffee or under extracted coffee, it can bring about bad flavors in the coffee. It might not play to the strengths of what you're looking for in that cup. Now, if we over extract coffee, one of the things that can happen is that it can start to change that flavor it can start to get bad. And what do we mean by that? Well, for under extracted coffee, some of the things that we talk about are that an under extracted coffee can be sour, it can be thin, and one of the unfortunate flavors is that it starts to get a little bit grassy or a little bit um, papery in terms of flavor. And the reason that happens is that an under extracted coffee, if the temperature of that coffee is also too low, is that it doesn't have a chance to develop caramels in the coffee. So when we talk extraction, what do we mean? When we say extraction, we're talking about the extracted solids or total dissolved solids in the cup of espresso. Now over and under extraction comes outside of the boundaries of what we're aiming for. So what are we aiming for? Well, ideally an espresso should run anywhere between 18 and 22% extraction. Now, if we're under extracting, we're getting down towards 17, 16%. If we're over extracting, we're ending up at 21, 22s and 23s. Now the way this is achieved is basically the contact time of your coffee with the head, with the temperature and how long it has and how long the coffee can be extracted. So if we sit it in there and we have a very fine grind and we're operating shots that are up towards 31, 32 and 33 seconds, we can end up with over extracted coffee because it's been in contact with the head for too long. 
if we have it in there and it's running too coarse and we're getting shots at 22, 23 and 24 seconds, it can end up under extracted because the contact time is too short. We compensate for that with temperature. So let's do that now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the temperature from this 94 degrees, we're gonna bring it up and we're gonna see what that does to the flavor. So, what we have now is a cup of coffee that is brewed at a higher temperature. We've gone up to about 96 degrees on this cup. Now what that means for us is that the higher temperature, in terms of taste, will develop a little bit more caramel, a little bit more body and sweetness to the coffee. It's given it a chance to develop the caramels where potentially the roaster has not. The risks with doing this is that you might get more astringent coffee. Astringency is not a flavor that we want in a cup of coffee like this. So let's give it a shot. Not bad, but a touch bitter. Now that bitterness can come from, as a result of the much higher temperature, the risk of basically burning the coffee. It's sitting up against 96 degrees, it's starting to cook, and the longer it's there, the hotter and more bitter it gets as it cooks and cooks and cooks. So what we'll do now is we'll bring that temperature and we'll go the polar opposite, we'll go all the way down, we'll sit it at about 92, 93 degrees and we'll see what happens with that cup. So as we see as this coffee's pouring, certainly as we brought that temperature down, one of the things that's not being developed as much is the depth of color in the crema. There's not enough heat there to really cut through that. So what we may find with this cup is ultimately that it will be brighter and a little bit more sour, which can be a good thing, but again, is dependent on the coffee that one is using. So definitely in this cup, it's a little bit less bitter and a little bit less sweet. So the sourness definitely comes through. But again, is that what we want in a cup of coffee like this? Interesting. So what I would say is certainly on the lower end of temperature, this coffee works very well. And the biggest thing when it comes to dialing into taste making changes to both your temperature, your pump pressure, your grind settings to change the level of extraction up or down is that at the end of the day, you're chasing what tastes good. It is up to you as your barista, as your head barista to determine what the coffee tastes like and if it's good to you and your customers. The most important thing when it comes to dialing into taste is that once you've done it, once you've found that perfect flavor in the cup, write down what you did. That way, you can repeat it again and again and again because there's no point in dialing into taste if it's not repeatable. The biggest thing when it comes to coffee is consistency. So when you find that perfect temperature, when you find that perfect pressure, you have perfectly extracted coffee, write it down and tell every other barista you work with, this is our new recipe, this is what we're gonna do. Hope you enjoyed this video and we hope to see you next time. Thank you for watching this week's Wolf College of Coffee vlog. If you'd like to watch another video, you can click one of them here. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe so you can always see the next video when it comes out next week. If you'd like to leave a comment or like below, we'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, grab a cup of coffee and come back soon. I can wait.